Wentz Financial Group presents Zips Basketball Weekly with John Gross. Investment management for your lifetime. Brought to you by Akron Children's Hospital and Bryant Heating and Cooling. And now your host, Joe Dunn. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to a brand new season of Zips Basketball Weekly with head coach John Gross. It's going to be brought to you all season long by the Wentz Financial Group. Well, coach, let's get right to it. Your team has a three-game winning streak. You're five and three in the season. Got wins over Evansville, Marshall, and Southern. Give the fans a little update. How's your team playing right now? Well, first, Joe, it's awesome to have fans back. Yes, it is. In these buildings <laughs> and... Uh, get some normalcy when it comes to how college basketball is yeah. played with pe having people in the buildings. I know our guys have enjoyed that. Our fans have been great. They our have. student body's been awesome. Uh, so let, let's start there. Yeah. It's great to be back doing this as well. Excited about our team. We've had an interesting journey so far uh, through the first month, basically. Uh, some ups and downs, but I like where we're headed. Yeah. You know, we've played some good basketball. I think you know, we're now eight games in, mm -hmm. and six of those eight, I think we've played pretty well. Uh, we got some things we've got to get better at, and uh, we're working hard. But it's a it's a great group to work yeah. with. Before we look at some highlights, Coach, you mentioned uh, the enthusiasm of the crowds we've had early on. The students now are down on the floor. I, I saw after the big win over Southern the other night, you took the team over there, shook hands with all the students to get them excited to be part of everything. Yeah, we're just so grateful that they spend their time with us, right? So it's, it's pretty neat. And, you know, I love the change that's been made where the students are right there. It gives yeah. us a chance to interact with them after the game regardless. Of, of what happens. We're just so appreciative of them coming and supporting us, and I know our guys are as well. Exactly. Well, let's go back and take a look at some of those November games. We're going to have a full look at the Marshall game a little bit later, but Coach, uh, the game people are still talking about. Let's start about that uh, Ohio State game, the opening game down in Columbus. Yeah, one of the games I thought we played really yeah. well, executed our game plan well. The guys really stepped up. I thought we showed a lot of toughness and resiliency to come back from 14 down to take the lead with three seconds to go. And, you know, obviously you're, you know, you watch that clip over and over again on oh, the yeah. last play and, you know, hindsight's always 20-20, but at the end of the day, we did what we always do in practice here. And, um, you know, we just had a busted switch, a busted coverage exactly. there on the last play that resulted in the basket. And, you know, unfortunately, but uh, doesn't certainly take anything away from our guys in terms of how they played in that game. Certainly went toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the best teams in the country. Exactly. Then you come back home to get big wins over Point Park and Wheeling. We did. Yeah, I thought it was good. It gave us a chance to learn more about our rotation. Um, and obviously came up with two wins there, convincing wins there. Uh, we're able to play a lot of guys and uh, really work on some execution things yeah. during practice leading up to those two games. Then you go down to Florida, the Gulf Coast Classic, play three pretty good mid-major teams down there. We did, and we knew it was going to be a difficult yeah. tournament, challenging tournament that would really test us. You know, I felt like going into it, you know, and looking back on it now, we talk about hindsight always being 20-20, yeah. but we had played so well against Ohio State, and then you've got everybody telling our guys how good oh, yeah. we're going to be. And then you come home, as you just mentioned, and play two games that you win in convincing yeah. fashion. And so for us, uh, I thought we lacked a little bit of humility, um, and we got humbled very quickly in the first game. I thought uh, Fordham is one of those two games, I thought, where we didn't play as well uh, as we did in, in six of them thus far. Uh, I didn't think we were physical enough. I thought they really took it to us. But we learned a lot about our offense uh, throughout that uh, showcase. We did. Uh, and what we needed to change. And if you don't get exposed like that, especially with a new team that stylistically plays different than we have the last three years, then it doesn't maybe spurn some of those changes that mm -hmm. we made when we came home for the two games coming out of the showcase. Exactly. Then you come home and play a Marshall team that's picked to win Conference USA. They're a good basketball team, and it was a heck of a game. Yeah, I, I thought uh, thus far, and we've played some good teams. Yeah. Uh, you know, I thought Ohio State and Marshall were the two best teams we've yeah. played thus far. And we certainly saw some good ones uh, at the Gulf Coast Showcase that we just mentioned. Uh, and we knew it was going to take a great effort. We worked really hard when we got back from Florida, Joe almost exclusively on offensive execution. You know, you and I have watched basketball a long time. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out if you don't score more than 40-some points, you're yeah, probably going to get beat. Exactly. You know, so we had to figure that out pretty rapidly. 
and I thought the guys really bought into what we did to changes we made during that week in between the showcase and the Marshall game and really bought into it. And uh, our offense in the last two games has been the best it's been all year. Exactly. We're looking at highlights right now, the first half against Marshall. Uh, Greg Tribble, what a half he had. He had 10 points, I think, in the first half, and he's come on right now. You talk a lot about him, how he's improved so much from when he got on campus to where he is right now. He has treme been tremendous during this two-game win streak here, three games, I guess, yeah. now. He's been tremendous, just really improved, Joe. I think with more opportunity, he's been more productive offensively. Greg has always been a great defender and a great teammate. And, uh, you know, the best compliment I can give him is when he's out there, I feel better. Okay. You know, because he talks, he's smart, uh, he knows what's going on, uh, and he makes you feel confident as a coach with his talk. We always talk about trusting the talk. He just engages everybody and gives the team a great vibe. So he's playing really well right yeah. now, probably in the last couple games, if you include the offensive end of the floor, probably the best yeah. he's played in his career to this point. Yeah, he had a nine-point lead at the half, Coach. You're up 49-40 to 40 at the half, but you know Marshall, as good as they are, Two great players. They're going to come back in that second half. Yeah, those two guards were absolutely tremendous. Give them their due. I mean, we talked after the game, Joe, you, myself, and Dave. Yeah. I mean, we threw 1-3-1, one, 2-3 three, one, three zone, trapped them, didn't trap them, uh, played different ball screen coverages, had different players on them, and he still got 30 efficiently. Yeah. And, Ken, and we're talking about Kenzie. He was terrific. Yeah. Taylor was equally as good, and some of the shots they made were just really difficult challenge shots. So my hat's off to them. It was a heck of a game. Uh, certainly one of the top, probably top five since I've been at Akron in terms of yeah. high-level offensive play and uh, production and guys stepping up and making plays for both teams. I'm guessing the way maybe to defend Kinsey is deny him the basketball, but that's tough to do. He is so active. He's such a good athlete. Yeah. When you deny him, they throw in lobs. Yeah. So then he gets behind yeah. you, and obviously he goes up and plays above everybody with his athleticism. So terrific player. Terrific win for us. I told the guys after the game that was a heck of a win. What do you tell the team now? We're up 9, 49-40. You know they're going to come out and come after you in that second half. Do you change anything? Or are you just trying to get some rest and come out strong? Well, we'll only change and make adjustments when we need to, right? So we, we obviously have contingency plans to everything. But, but uh, the main thing in that situation is getting them to understand it's not a 20-minute game. It's yeah. a 40-minute game, and you got to come out and play another half. Exactly. Well, the Zips are up 49 to 40 at the half. Don't go away. You're going to see one of the great second halves we've seen in a long time. The Zips are going to come back and win it in the final seconds. So don't go away. We're back right after this timeout. The difference with Wentz Financial Group is that we do not have a cookie cutter answer to any of our clients' needs. Every day is completely different in the market and every client's situation is unique. We value the opportunity and responsibility to manage the hopes and dreams of our 3,000 customers nationwide. Come see the difference Wentz Financial Group can make for your financial future. Wentz Financial Group, investment management for your lifetime. This is my back before surgery, and then this was it after. These things are in my back right now, helping keep it straight so I get to go back to dance with my friends. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, good to see you, Chloe. From my perspective, there is nothing that I wouldn't let you do. Really, all the credit for how well you're doing is just you and uh, how hard you've worked to get back to where you are. I'm really proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, welcome back to Zips Basketball Weekly with head coach John Gross. We are at halftime of that big win over Marshall the other night. Zips up 49-40. to 40. Let's get right to the highlights because, Coach, this was a heck of 20 minutes of basketball. Oh, big-time game, and you're going to see a lot of big-time plays here made by both teams. Uh, obviously, these are going to be our highlights, so it's going to be our guys. Enrique Freeman was absolutely terrific with a double-double, 20-plus -double, points, 10-plus rebounds. There you see Trimble making a big shot as we execute uh, one of our screen-the-screener actions. Uh, Bondego was great in the post. Um, you know, here he draws an and one. We just got contributions from a ton of guys. I mean, it was super high-level game. Um, you know, really excited to get the win. Happy for our guys. Boy, they came out in, early in that second half, Coach. They hit uh, three straight threes from deep to get back in it. They did. All of a sudden, it went from, like, a double-figure game uh, to a one possession yeah. game in the span of about two and a half minutes, Joe. Right. It was a quick, 
you know, quick burst by Marshall. They can do that as explosive as they are offensively. I think we ended up with four players in double figures, Coach. You spread it out, but everybody contributed in this no, one. No question. I think we're going to have that type of team, and we'll obviously get to Southern here in a minute where we had five guys in double figures. So, you know, we've uh, been spreading the wealth really well, ball movement. We've had over a 50% assist rate in the last two games. That's always something I'm looking at. 16 assists on 30 field goals in this Marshall game. We're down, I think, 86-83 with 32 seconds left. We come back, hit crucial free throws, and somehow win that basketball game. Yeah, just made a couple plays. Yeah. And then obviously the Enrique Freeman dunk was unbelievable late. Uh, and then he steps up and makes the free throws. And we made big free throws. You're right, Joe. Enrique made three for three. And then Xavier Castaneda made two for two, all within the uh, guts of the game there to close it. Uh, Big-time players make big-time plays, and those guys did that. Yeah, we talk about Greg Trill. We're going to see him a little bit later uh, in the program, but he has come on so fast, especially in the free throw shooting, shooting with a lot of confidence right now. Yeah, he really works at it. He's a guy that's in early. He has a routine. Uh, Greg has improved a great deal uh, over the last couple years, so it's really uh, neat to see his progress and his development. There's the, uh, the dunk that brought the crowd to their feet. Huge free throw right here, Coach, and he steps up and drills it. Yeah, he did, didn't he? Boy, he made some big plays, both ends of the floor, and then here he is snatching a rebound, then he makes both of these, and so it's, uh, you know, it's neat to see, you know, the way, the way that this kid is on and off the court, is he's really special uh, as a teammate, person, student, player. Uh, it's great to see him be uh, play such a valuable role and be successful on our team. They're going to get one final look at it, Coach. That doesn't go down, and the Zips win it by two. Huge win over a Marshall team, Coach. They're going to be in a tournament sometime. I'm convinced the, yeah, of that. Yeah, they're good. They're really good, especially exactly. when you have that type of guard play with Taylor and Kinsey. Right. Then you come back uh, Saturday night against a very physical Southern team, and you were right, Coach. They were physical, and we kind of joked after the game, they are so physical, you can't call everything on them. It'll be a three-hour game. Yeah, it's just the reality of it, right? I yeah. mean, so you've got a team that's top 35 in the nation enforcing turnovers. Yeah. They get a ton of steals. But they're also among the 15 worst teams in terms of <laughs> fewest fouls per game. So they foul a lot. Yeah. That's part of the reason they get all those steals. So you go into the game trying to get your guys to understand through your preparation how physical and tough it's going to be. And, you know, they, we're not going to complain. You can't make excuses. you got to be a boss with the ball. And I thought the first eight minutes we did not do yeah. a very good job of that. I thought they really manhandled us uh, and set the rules. And then in the last 32 minutes, I mean, we went toe-to-toe -to -toe and then some. And I thought we were much more physical. We had eight turnovers, Joe, in the first right. eight minutes of the game. Yeah and finished with seven the next 32 minutes of the game. Right. You know, so we took care of the ball a lot better, and that was a big key. I made a note on my scorecard, uh, Coach, and at about 10 minutes, I said, the team finally knows they're in a physical basketball game. This is like setting me playing the playground in the summertime, back and forth, nobody calling fouls. you got to really suck it up and play hard. You do, and there's no need. you got to get to that next yeah. play. And, you know, when you force 21 turnovers a game, you know, we typically like to play 10, 11, 12 for the night, right? Yeah. But I even said to my assistants before the game, I said, guys, the way they play, I would swallow 14 or 15 right now. Yeah. Because they forced 21. Yeah. You know, and obviously we finished with 15 there. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, they're super yeah. physical. Great test because stylistically, Joe, completely different game than the Marshall game. You're right. So, you know, good teams have to find a way to play in different styles of games. Uh, if you're good. Yeah. And so I thought from that standpoint, it really tested us and it was a good game. You win at 79 to 62. People look at that score and they say, oh, maybe that was an easy one. That was not an easy game. That, and it's a good thing you had a week off because these guys need some rest. Yeah, no <laughs> question. I know it was a physical game for yeah. sure. Um, and, and one, I'm glad obviously that we won and had a chance to play that type of team. We've done that the previous two times we had played teams that had that style were West Virginia and Morgantown in an exhibition game and then Fordham in Florida. So this was our third go round against a style like that. I thought our response was much better and we were much improved from the last two times we went against teams that play like that stylistically. Exactly. For the Zips, that was their third straight win. As Coach said, we're now 5-3 and three on the season. We're going to take a break, come back with our player awards, a couple good ones right after this timeout. The difference with Wentz Financial Group is that we do not have a cookie cutter answer to any of our clients' needs. Every day is completely different in the market and every client situation is unique. 
we value the opportunity and responsibility to manage the hopes and dreams of our 3,000 customers nationwide. Come see the difference Wentz Financial Group can make for your financial future. Wentz Financial Group, investment management for your lifetime. What we make right here at the University of Akron holds up under pressure. What we make climbs the ladder and leads to record highs. What we make lifts us all. And makes us all better. With everything we make, everyone rises. Okay, one of my favorite times uh, each week during our show, we name our Players of the Month and our Player on the Rise. We've talked a lot about these guys already in the program, but let's talk about our Player of the Month, Enrique Freeman. And Coach, uh, I know you just love this kid because, number one, you didn't know anything about him. you got to be lucky sometimes. He shows up and he's just been unbelievable for unbelievable. you. Unbelievable. Yeah. On and off the court, student, person, teammate, player, work ethic. Yeah. You know, he represents a lot of what we're about. Um, and uh, it's just a real pleasure to coach him. And it's really neat to see his development, how thirsty and hungry, yeah. hungry he is for improvement is, is what, uh, you know, what's amazing about him, the way his work ethic and his consistency in terms of how he grinds yeah. and works on a daily basis. But what really separates him, and I told our AD this, is his character. I told Charles that, just his character on top of that talent. You know, that character is really the what fuels, mm -hmm. you know, that engine that runs right. for him. So, uh, yeah, no, he, he gets, uh, you know, he, he, he earns everything he's, he's gotten to this point, and it's really neat. And he still has more. What's sure. crazy, Joe, is he's a sophomore. Right. You know, and so he still has a lot more room for growth. Uh, especially as we continue to add strength and good weight to that body. Exactly. Let's talk a little bit about Enrique Freeman. He's a 6'7 sophomore, as the coach said, out of St. Martin de Porres High School up in Cleveland. This is why he's our player of the month. 24 points, 14 rebounds, one steal, two blocks against Marshall. Had the tip-in dunk, free throw in the final seconds to help beat uh, Marshall. 15 points, 13 rebounds, a steal, three block shots versus Southern. He just keeps coming at people. Yeah, no, he's been a double-double machine yeah. for us. I mean, you pretty much know what you're getting night in and night out from him. You know, he's going to score 10-plus points, and he's going to get 10-plus rebounds. He's just really consistent. Yeah. Last time I coached a guy like that where you knew every night that was going to happen was David West when I was an assistant coach at Xavier who went on to play in the NBA, be an NBA All-Star, and win NBA championships. So, you know, that's a, a heck of a compliment to Reek. But his consistency, man, you know, when you're a coach and you know what you're getting every day from a guy, you know, consistency over greatness, Joe. And, uh, you know, he certainly has been that. Our player of the month, how about Greg Tribble? He's in the starting lineup right now. He's a 6'1 sophomore out of Winton Woods High School down in Cincinnati. Also came to Akron from Huntington Prep. Here's why he's our player on the rise, Coach. 12 points, 4 assists versus Marshall. 19 points, 11 for 13 from the free throw line. Only one turnover in 29 minutes, I think, against Southern. You got him in the lineup now, and he is responding. What's really cool about Greg is I told you stylistically, West Virginia, Fordham, and Southern played a certain way. They really get into you. They're physical. They try to turn you over. You know, Greg will be the first to tell you at West Virginia, he didn't have one of his better games in that department taking care of the ball as a point guard. So now you fast forward here and what he's learned and how he's grown. And a lot of that's happened because he's had more yeah. opportunity. And like you said, he plays with one turnover, playing yeah. roughly 30 minutes when they're, you know, grabbing you, fouling you, trying to steal your ball for 40 minutes. And so he's really, really grown on the offensive end. He's always been a great defender, both on the ball and off the ball. Both these guys I co uh, coach are a great tribute, I think, to you and your coaching staff. Because some, some players come into a program, they never get better. These two guys come into your program, and they've gotten better with the coaching. Oh, clearly they've gotten better. And obviously it starts with their character. Yeah. And I always say that. I mean, I appreciate you trying to give us all the credit, Joe. But... <laughs> You know, our staff does a good job. Yeah. I've got a great staff, a great support staff. Everybody's on the same page, and they work really hard for these guys, uh, Greg included. Yeah. But it starts with the young man's character and, uh, and their work capacity and their ability to learn and their willingness to want to learn. So, 
Greg, very similar in that way to Enrique. Congratulations to those two young men, Enrique Freeman and Greg Tribble. We're going to take a break, come back, talk a little bit about the upcoming game. So don't go away. We're back after this. Even if this is the three-point line, and this is the hoop, that counts. if this is home ice, and this is sticking the landing, kids will find a way to keep playing the sports they love, and we'll keep helping them. After an injury, Akron Children's is dedicated to getting your child back to the game as quickly and safely as possible. However they play it. <laughs> Learn more at akronchildrens.org slash sports. The difference with Once Financial Group is that we do not have a cookie cutter answer to any of our clients' needs. Every day is completely different in the market and every client situation is unique. We value the opportunity and responsibility to manage the hopes and dreams of our 3,000 customers nationwide. Come see the difference Wentz Financial Group can make for your financial future. Wentz Financial Group, investment management for your lifetime. Hope you're making plans to be over at Rhodes Arena on this coming Sunday afternoon. Two o'clock tip-off against Florida A&M. And, Coach, they've got one of the better nicknames in all of sports, the Rattlers of yeah, Florida A&M. Sure, right? I love that. Huh? Yeah, no question about it. Our biggest concern is obviously their athleticism. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, pick preseason number one yeah. in the SWAC. Um, they're also, interestingly enough, one of four schools. We're one of those four. Uh, that's tied to Nike LeBron. Okay. And so uh, they had that happen this past uh, this past year. But they're super talented in making the transition from the MEAC to the SWAC. You know, obviously um, their leading scorer, MJ Randolph, uh, is, a, is a load and a handful. Yeah. So we'll have to be ready to go. They're extremely athletic, uh, very similar to Southern in that regard. They're coming up from uh, Tallahassee, Florida. As Coach said, have an outstanding player in uh, MJ Randolph. He was first team all conference last year. They also have a real good point guard in Jalen Spear. He was all freshman in the MEAC. So they got some pieces there that can cause they, some problems. They do, and Southern was no different, you know, and it'll be a great challenge. We'll have to be ready to go, and hopefully – after going through what we went through against Southern with that athleticism and physicality, we'll be more ready to go to start the game. You know, we had an eight-minute adjustment period against Southern that we're going to try to avoid as we get ready to prepare for Florida A&M. Exactly. Then the Zips go down to Dayton, Ohio on Wednesday, the 20th or 15th of this month. They'll take on a very good Wright State team as one of the top teams in the Horizon League. Yeah, and Scott Nagy does an unbelievable job with that team. Uh, they've been very consistent over the last five, six years, if you look at their, you know, they're pretty much winning 20 plus every year and in the thick of things every season. We knew that when we scheduled them, yeah. challenging game. They really test your IQ. They really do. They're very sharp. They're execute. They're known for their execution. They run great stuff. And then they've got a great interior player in Grant Basile that'll yeah. be a handful for us down low. So another great challenge. Yeah, he's six feet nine and one of their leading scores. They also have Tanner Holden, a real good point guard. So Dayton, uh, a lot of alum down in that Dayton area. You want to see out there uh, on the 15th? Because you use a lot of Zip fans down there on that 15th, right? Yeah, no right question, State. especially as close as this. Exactly. And then, of course, the Zips will take on a Radford team that they're coming up from the Big South Conference, and that game will be on the 20th. That'll be a Monday night, a rare Monday night game, Coach. Yeah, last game before the holidays, right? Yeah. And uh, you always worry about that from a mindset perspective. Our group's pretty mature and older. And we'll have to handle that part of it. But, you know, there'll be a challenge. They played West Virginia very yeah. tough here recently. Um, and, and it's new, new head coach, Darius Nichols. Yep. And I've known him for a while. I know he's going to do a great job. Uh, and then, obviously, their, their offensive output really starts with Rashawn Williams. And, you know, he's going to be a challenge for us to defend. Coach, congratulations on the uh, three-game winning streak. We're playing well right now. Look forward to uh, talking in a couple weeks about how things are going. Yeah, looking forward to keep working with this team. I'm excited about uh, that opportunity. we got a great group. For head coach John Gross, I'm Joe Dunn. Thanks for watching. Back in two weeks with more Zips Basketball Weekly. And always remember, go Zips. Wentz Financial Group presents Zips Basketball Weekly with John Gross. Investment management for your lifetime. Brought to you by Akron Children's Hospital and Bryant Heating and Cooling. Thanks for watching and go Zips! 
This has been a presentation from Learfield.